What is going on everyone and welcome back to the Stock Trends channel. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at ticker symbol ZOM Zometica. Now we actually have a press release out fresh this morning. That's what you want to talk about this stock. We want to talk about where it could be headed in the near future, what this press release actually means for the company, and of course, support, resistance, and some technical analysis like we always like to do here on the channel. So again, like always, we are not going to be hyping anything up. It's very simple. It's what's in front of us, and we can trade off of what's in front of us. And so unbiased thoughts on ZOM. So Really quick, if you wouldn't mind making sure you're jumping down, subscribing to the channel, hitting that thumbs up button. Appreciate every single one of you guys who does so. And we're going to be using Webull. There's a link down below to get four free stocks when you sign up and open a brokerage account. Make sure you open the account to actually get the stocks. But really quick, let's talk about the press release here. So here it is at 6.15 a.m. actually over the weekend. But, you know, we got this this press release and now, you know, of course, you know, now that the market's open, the stock's going to react. So we got the press release yesterday. The stock's going to now react and here it is. So it's a letter to the shareholders from the CEO, um, Robert Cohen. So he talks about uh, the recent increase in the price of the stock, right, um, has allowed the outstanding warrants to start being exercised. So with that said, they have now received over $40 million in additional cash than what they kind of uh, anticipated having. Um, so they've now received that through at least the 15th of January. And so this what this, this, is, this is helping their balance sheet. So a lot of investors long term, even short term, right, traders, you want to make sure a company has a solid balance sheet, they have sufficient cash, because the risks, especially with a lot of penny stocks, the risks without having sufficient cash is you see more downside risk because there's the potential for them to do an offering to dilute shares, which increases the supply, which then will draw down the price. And you don't want to be in a stock when they do that. So they claim to have a very healthy balance sheet. Of course, they're going to say that it's already healthy, whatever they want to say. But now they have over $90 million net cash and cash equivalents. And so this is awesome for them because they expect that that's going to be sufficient for them to fund operations through the calendar year 2023. Now, when companies say that, of course, take it with a grain of salt, but generally what that means is that they have enough cash without doing offerings, without having to dilute shares for you know to get them through 2023. And their goal at that point is to be cash flow positive. So we'll see, of course, how that, you know, how how this ages, how this letter ages. And many times a lot of companies, you know, it, this doesn't age well, but at least at a minimum, you'll see that at a minimum, this is good news for the short term and you should not expect offerings. And so it's making it a lot easier for people who see a stock that's up massively over the over the past couple of weeks, you know it's almost a matter of time before an offering is coming. And it's great to see that, that you know, at least they're, they're kind of reassuring investors that it's not coming, at least as of right now. They didn't say that, but essentially that's what it means. In addition, they regained compliance with the uh, listing requirements uh, that they had for the uh, New York Stock Exchange. And they'll be removed from the uh, New York Stock Exchange American non-compliant issuers on the site. Another thing that they also wanted to mention is in here their bonus situation. So essentially what they're doing is that now they're rearranging their bonuses uh, for you know employees and whatnot um, based on the achievement of the actual company, their revenue, their cash flow projections. So it's a little bit more enticing, I guess, for shareholders, or it's really, it's for the benefit of the company or the company does well as a whole, you know, you'll get a bonus. So essentially it's it's good for shareholders. That's, that's what they're saying. Uh, and then of course, you know, what the, the real kind of, you know, hype we're seeing, or at least a lot of the hype we're seeing is that their launch of Traforma, right, which was their diagnostic platform that they're going to be you know, uh, issuing out their launch of that on the 30th. Apparently, it's still going according to plan. They talk about how they're doing a controlled release phase, you know, for right now, based on what's going on. To be honest, for me reading this, this is just my potential interpretation of this. Um, it's, it is what it is. I mean, it, I, I think what, what we're seeing right here is the stock got a lot of attention for whatever reasons, pumps, hype, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. There's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. Um, and, and, you know, is it rightly justified? Because we knew this was coming for a long time. I and mean, I was someone who traded this stock. Go back to the chart. You know, I was someone who traded this stock back in the spring uh, of last year. And and so, you know, at that point, I was still seeing press releases for their true form of platform. Um, you know, and, and the stock was a sub 25 cent stock at the time. So 
um, for, for whatever reason, the stock is blowing up now, you know, is that, you know, rightly warranted? Should that have happened earlier? Who knows? Um, you know, but for me, what I'm, what I'm seeing based on this is that it, there's still a work in progress here, right? They're slowly going to be releasing their product. They're slowly going to be getting this out. Um, and it's not going to be as widely distributed, you know, as, as some may think. So we'll see how this goes. It's something definitely keeping an eye on, see how this goes. This also could be one of those sell the news events buy the rumor, sell the news. Many times you see with stocks like this, in anticipation of their release of a product or their launch, they get a lot of attention. What should we look to the stock chart? Yeah, we're seeing a lot of attention. Now we still got plenty of time, you know, over a month um, for this to happen. But, you know, at the end of the day, you know, this is a stock that I personally, right, I, I, I would not want to be holding a large portion of my shares on or through or beyond the 30th of March, unless I was a long-term investor. If I'm a trader, I'm trading off the volume, the price action, what we have in front of us. So here is the current chart, right? Putting in higher lows, right? But now we have more information. We have to look at the four-hour chart to show us what's happening in the pre-market and after hours. So the daily chart is not gonna show you that, but now we're pushing up. So we have previous highs of that 148. So that 150 is gonna be a very key area. But look what happened here. So we wake up this morning, the stock pushes up to 137. It's currently sitting at 121, the pre-market hours when we're filming this video. And we'll have to see how the stock reacts to this. It really isn't anything um, different than this shareholder letter. The only new piece of information that we kind of have now is that they, are, they have enough cash to get them through 2023. Outside of that, Everything else was pretty much already known and was not new information. It was just kind of a reassuring letter by the CEO saying, hey, here's an update on what's going on. So the keys that we want to talk about right now is it looks like that $1 level will be holding up potentially as support. Um, we have a consolidation period from if we draw on some lines, we have consolidation right here from about 85 cents up towards, you know, 105. So that 85 to 105 is a consolidation support right now. Um, if the stock does drop below 85, it probably has some more downside um, from that point. To the upside, over this 137, so over the pre-market high here this morning, if we zoom in with this 137, that could send us on a little bit of a run up towards this 148, 150. Over 150, we look at the daily chart again, over 150, that gets us into you know a new high as of late, and this stock can make a run towards 175 to $2. Now, maybe not right away, but it could happen over the course of a couple days, couple weeks. So that's the key resistance for right now, that 148 to 150 area in terms of ZOM, 85 cents to the downside. If we do fall below 85, maybe look for 75, you know, kind of a round number, you know, that quarter, you know, nice solid psychological area for you know people to see support or for people to look to buy. If we do drop below that, we have a gap down here from you know under 60 down towards 50. So I would say that this stock could come down to that point to the downside if we do see weakness below some of these upper levels that we are currently sitting at. So as of right now, that's what we're looking at. We're going to be opening up. Look at the four-hour chart yet again. We're going to be opening up um, a lot higher. Of course, we'll see how the market reacts. Um, you know, if the market reacts in a positive way overall, like the market stays up this week, that's going to be you know that's going to be you know even more helpful for ZOM to make further pushes to the upside. If we see weakness in the overall market, then yeah, we could see weakness in a lot of other stocks as well. So as of right now, futures are green. Things are slowly creeping up. Um, you know, and so we'll see how this week goes. It's a short week. We have the inauguration on Wednesday, which is tomorrow. Um, that could throw a wrench in things depending upon if there's any crazy news that happens. So we'll see. Um, you know, if, if that does happen, if we do see big drawdowns, that could offer some really good dip buys for a lot of stocks. So take it with a grain of salt. Hopefully this video was helpful in some way, shape, or form. If it was, make sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Turn on notifications. I appreciate every single one of you guys who does so. This is the Webull desktop platform. We like to trade on here every single day, have trading hours from 4 a.m. Eastern to 8 p.m. Eastern, so you can take advantage of that full pre-market. So we go back to ZOM, right? This stock was, you know, we, we, this, this letter came out yesterday. But if you're someone who doesn't have pre-market hour access, you may not be able to trade or, or to sell. Let's say you wanted to sell some of your shares up here at 137 or 135. Let's say you had an existing order at 135. You can't do so if you don't have access to the trading hours um, during these pre-market hours um, like a platform like Webull. That's why we use it here. It's an awesome platform for that purpose. Also, links down below to get $30 in free credits with M1 Finance and some other resources like finviz.com, which we like to use here a lot on the channel. We go over to finviz really quick 
quick ZOM. It tells you guys a ton of information, insider transactions up over 30% in the past three months. That's telling you big money is buying and then that signals usually a lot of times um, moves in the underlying stock. So appreciate you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.